Hey guys, finally getting on with getting the YouTube started. Um, you guys voted a few weeks ago about what you wanted, if you wanted more blog content or YouTube content, and a lot of you did vote YouTube, but a number of you also said we like the blog for the content you produce, so here we are. So on this channel, I'm not specifically gonna talk about lifting. It's gonna be a mix of topics. Um, I'm gonna talk about a range of things that interest me, that might interest you. I'll do requests. Uh, I'm gonna talk, I might do a few tutorials on here. I'll talk about the plans for the future. Where uh, it's generally going to be, like I say, vlogging. Um, I might take you on trips with me. I'm planning on doing a lot of travelling. Um, and I'd love to take you guys along and document it and show you what I'm up to in the world. If you like what I do, leave me comments, let me know what you want. And I'll try and respond and do what I can to produce what you guys want, essentially. Today's video, I'm talking about something which sparked my interest about a month ago now which is barefooting. I initially came across the concept of barefooting listening to a podcast that a friend had recommended to me. It's the Mind Pump Media uh, podcast. And they talk lifting and, yeah, generally it's just lifting. <laughs> but they go on some other topics and it's really fun to listen to. I'll link them in the description below. Really interesting content. They talked about foot strength in the squat. And as you know, I was obsessed with squatting for about 13 weeks. Yeah, small of. <laughs> um, and they talked about how foot strength can be a really key component in the squat and how it can improve ankle mobility and generally support base. Because as we know, you start from the bottom up when you're lifting. You think about what's the bottom doing and you slowly work up the building blocks because whatever's happening at the bottom is going to affect the top a lot more. And, and they talked about like hunter-gatherer feet and they said about how different they look from our modern feet they're wide they're spread out they've got these thick pads on the bottom and they're, they're just well muscled feet compared to our modern ones which are I mean they're pointy which is kind of weird I mean the little toes squashed in the big toes squashed in the arches are weak the muscles all over are atrophied we've got thin soft soles we generally don't have very strong feet so this got me thinking I wanted to do a little bit of research into it I I thought, okay, if I can strengthen my feet, I can improve my squat, because I do have a bit of a knee dance going on, and I know that's to do with vastus medialis and blah, blah, blah. So I did some research, and it really opened my eyes to something. I mean, the shoes we wear aren't really designed for our feet. They're, they're casts. They're cast for the foot. And over years and years of wearing them, you weaken the foot completely. You suddenly think, I need arch support because my arch is hurt. Whereas actually you've always just had something that isn't designed for the foot and weakened the arch. I mean, I used to find when I used to run half marathons all, all like two or three years ago, um, if I didn't have arch support in the shoe, my ankles would hurt. And also I noticed when the distance started increasing, I also felt like this, it was like a painful stretching, burning feeling in the arch. And I just kind of ignored it as most people do with injuries. <laughs> and it really got me thinking like this, looking at it, I thought our feet are weak. We don't strengthen them. The thing that carries us around all day is weak. And because we have these thick soles on, we don't think where the feet are going. We just plonk them down heavily, which creates a lot of impact on the joints long term. We don't think. The first time I took my shoes off to have a go at this, I noticed I was initially wanting to walk on my toes, which I thought was really weird. And I do generally find now that I walk slightly more to the toe than the heel, unless the ground's very, very soft, but generally onto the toe, which I thought was very peculiar. Also, when researching, I found we have about 300 receptors on the base of the feet, which I didn't know about. And putting shoes on and these thick casts around, it completely shuts off that part of the brain that uses these receptors in the feet to take in all this information about our environment. I did find in the first week or so, my brain was tired. I was very tired. My brain was really tired. It was something I hadn't really taken into account, was how much my brain was having to work to feel out the environment beneath me. Another thing with wearing shoes, you tighten up these laces and it constricts a lot of the capillaries in the feet, which essentially reduces blood flow. And as a few of you might know, I do have Raynaud's which is a, it's an autoimmune disease which develops usually in your 20s where essentially 
fingers and toes, the blood just stops getting to them. They, they go white, they go numb, and it goes on for a little while. Usually when you're cold, or so in some cases high stress, but generally it's cold for me because I work outdoors as an equine, as a horse photographer, I'm outdoors in all weathers. So when it's cold as hell, I'm still out there. Um, you do find quite a few tips and tricks for keeping warm. Maybe I'll do a video on that in the winter, who knows? And um, it's something that's kind of started more, as I say, in my 20s. It freaked me out at first, but I kind of got used to it. I, I thought if this, if barefooting, they talk about barefooting increasing circulation of the feet, because obviously you're building muscle, you're moving the feet a lot more, and also not restricting blood flow. I thought maybe this can help. Who knows? I mean, it'll, it'll show up in winter, so I'm very interested to see how this experiment goes. Winter's going to be challenging, I know, I might have to get something to go on my feet. With shoes, we do disfigure the feet, especially the toes. Um, obviously, the little toe is pushed right in, the big toe has like a weird inward angle, whereas if you look at the hunter-gatherer feet, they're spread wide. And this also, it creates pain, it creates bunions and it creates general disfigurement in the foot which people then have surgery to have removed and it's just not good for your feet. This might seem a little bit hippie-ish but I have found myself turning into a little bit of a hippie. I'm kind of feeling like I'm true to myself now and there's a thing called grounding also more commonly known as earthing and it talks about the electrical charges in the earth and in us and by putting shoes on we kind of block this electrical charge reception. So if we take our shoes off and walk on natural surfaces, not pavement so much, but like natural surfaces like grass and dirt and things like that, tend to be able to absorb the earth benefits in a really bizarre sort of way, um, absorb these electrical charges and there's more research into it talking about how the electrical charges in the environment around us can affect us more. They did some scientific research into it and they talked about like the mental benefits, which a lot of people, you know, is, you go on a walk somewhere, you walk barefoot in the grass, it feels really nice and you just feel generally better. And so they did some research and they did find there are positive benefits to it. It can improve blood thickness, which there wasn't a lot of detail on this. So, but I'm assuming it means if your blood's thin, it'll put it back where it should be. If it's thick, it'll put it back where it should be. Also, it can improve hormonal imbalances. So it can balance out the hormones, in particular the adrenal system, so you're reducing the stress in the body. So, I mean, how can you even say that's a bad thing? If you can reduce your stress. I did say also, this balancing, it can reduce overall inflammation throughout the body and improve sleep. I mean, I generally find I sleep well anyway, so I'm not really a great judge on this. I tend to sleep like a rock. Nothing wakes me. <laughs> So my experience has been quite an interesting one. I mean, I've had mixed reactions. I've had people look at me like I've grown a third head. Um, I've had people show quite a bit of interest and say, oh yeah, try that. And other people, I've had quite a few comments saying, oh, when you step on a nail, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. That'll probably happen, but I don't care. And the only time I've been told that I had to put shoes on was when I was at work. As I mentioned, I'm a horse photographer. Uh, I tend to do a lot of shows and events, so I tend to be in the arena a lot, and for health and safety concerns, I have to have something on my feet, even if that thing on my feet provides no protection. But I'm not complaining, because <laughs> I don't like heavy shoes now. I've found when I put shoes back on after a week of not wearing them, it made my feet ache. So obviously my feet weren't happy, I'm listening to what my body's saying. I have taken some before photos, and I'm going to take some photos in a year's time, to show how my feet have changed. Um, so the front, on top, below. I wish I'd taken a picture of the arch. Maybe I'll do that soon. So definitely I will produce something on this. I'll let you guys see how things have changed, essentially. But I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on the subject. If you've tried it, let me know in the comments. Maybe try it yourself. See how you find it, even if it's just going for a little walk in the grass once a day. See how you feel. and. Again, let me know how you get on with it, because it's something that's really fascinating me at the minute, and how, we've, obviously, shoes have been necessary over history. It's a fascinating topic. I get a topic. I definitely recommend you guys go research it, check out the articles on it, really interesting stuff. And, again, leave me a comment, let me know if you like this, let me know what you want to see in the future, and I'll speak to you soon.